Hi, welcome back. So now we're going to start talking about how the determinant relates to the invertibility of a matrix. So I will give us the theorem and then unpack what it means, and then we'll do a related example. So our theorem states that a matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. So all right, this looks like a very simple statement, but there's actually a lot of implications in it. So when we say if and only if in math, this gives us an implication in both directions. So this says that if we find that the determinant of A is not equal to zero, then we know that A has an inverse. So if you show that the determinant of A is not zero, this will tell you that A has an inverse. You can also go the other direction. So if you know that A has an inverse, this will mean that the determinant cannot be zero. So you get both implications this way. You can start with having an invertible matrix, and then you can know for sure that the determinant is non-zero, or you can know that the determinant is non-zero, and this will tell you that the in matrix is invertible. This also works for the converse statements. So if we find that the determinant of A is equal to zero, this will tell us that A cannot have an inverse, so A would be singular. Moreover, if you know that A doesn't have an inverse, it's not invertible, then this must mean that the determinant is equal to zero. So by finding the determinant, you can determine whether or not the inverse exists. So the reasoning behind this is a bit more complicated and involved than I really think we need to explore right now, but I do want to show you with the two by two case. So if you think about our two by two matrix, A, B, C, D, then we know that if the inverse, A inverse, exists, it looks like the following. 1 over AD minus BC times the matrix D negative C in the first column and negative BA in the second column. So this was our shortcut for finding the 2 by 2 inverse. So if this inverse exists, what we have on the outside here is 1 over AD minus BC. And that AD minus BC is specifically our formula for the 2 by 2 determinant. So we really have 1 over the determinant of A times our new matrix. So if this inverse exists, we would need the determinant of A to be something that we can divide by, so it cannot be 0. If the determinant of A was 0, we'd be dividing by 0, which isn't allowed, and we wouldn't have an inverse. So this tells us that in order to have an inverse matrix, it needs to have the determinant not be 0, at least in the 2 by 2 case. Hopefully at this point you can sort of believe that a similar process will work for the larger matrices, but I'm not going to worry too much about the formal proof here. So let's take this idea of the determinant relating to the invertibility of a matrix and do an example. What we're going to do is identify a value alpha such that the matrix A is singular. And remember, singular means that it's not invertible. So I'll give you a matrix A here and it has one unknown value in it. So our first column is alpha, negative 1, 1. The second column is negative 2, 2, 1. And the third column is 0, 3, 2. So we're wanting this matrix to not be invertible. We want it to be singular. And so we'd like the determinant to be equal to 0. Because if the determinant is 0, then this doesn't have an inverse, which is what we've been asked to find. So we're going to take the determinant of this matrix, set it equal to 0, and solve for alpha. So I'm taking the determinant of A, which is the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix, and I just need to expand this out using the formula. So if you want, you could pause the video here and try this on your own. This is some good practice with the determinant. See how it goes, and then come back and we'll do it together. All right, so I'm going to expand across the first row. I'll start by taking alpha and then multiplying by the determinant of the matrix two, one, three, two. Then I'll subtract my negative two times the determinant of the matrix negative one, one, three, two. And then I'll add zero times the determinant of the matrix negative one, one, two, one. And we can see here that with the zero, this final term is going to go away. So, all right, let's simplify. 
So the first term, I'm getting alpha times two times two minus three times one. Then I'm adding two times negative one times two minus three times one. And then I'm adding zero times negative one times one minus two times one. Now we just continue simplifying. So I'm getting alpha times four minus three plus two times negative two minus three plus zero. So I'm getting alpha times one plus two times negative five, which is alpha minus 10. All right, so we found my determinant of my matrix. Alpha is our unknown value and we got alpha minus 10 as the determinant. So if this matrix has an inverse, we need this value to not be zero, but we've been asked to find the value of alpha such that there is no inverse, such that it's a singular matrix. And so we wanna set the determinant equal to zero. So we'll take the determinant equal to zero, which is like setting alpha minus 10 equal to zero, and that's giving us an alpha value of 10. So we can confirm that the matrix A is singular when alpha is equal to 10. And that's it. So this is how the determinant is related to invertibility and how we might use it to find a matrix that is invertible or not invertible. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.